for which value of k will the quadratic equation 3x squared plus k minus 2 times x plus k equal to 0 will have no roots. So uh, let us understand what this sentence means. So the keywords is no roots, will have no roots. Okay, so whenever you have these keywords, some one formula should pop up or pop out of your brain. No roots means or that implies b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. Okay, now the next thing that we need to find is what is a, what is b, and what is c. So I hope you know now a is equal to the coefficient of x squared. So a is equal to the coefficient of x squared, which is 3. b is the coefficient of x, which is the whole k minus 2. k minus 2. And c is the constant. So c is k, yeah? So I'm going to substitute this in this formula. So this b would change to k minus 2 the whole squared minus 4 times a. a is 3 times c which is k is less than 0. So this means this is k minus 2 times k minus 2 k minus 2 times k minus 2 and this is minus 12 k is less than 0. So expanding this, k times k is k squared, k times negative 2 is negative 2k, negative 2 times k is negative 2k, and negative 2 times negative 2 is plus 4. Minus 12k is less than 0. So this is pretty simple. So this is, let me do one more step. So this is k squared minus 2k minus 2k minus 12k plus 4 is less than 0. So k, this means k squared minus, this is 12, no, this is minus 4 minus 12 is minus 16k plus 4 is less than 0. So till here, I think you're just substituted. Now what does this mean? Then you're saying a quadratic quadratic equation is less than zero. So let me show that in a graphical way. Suppose this is your y-axis and this is your x-axis. And let us say this is a quadratic, uh, this is a graph, parabola, equation of, this is a graph of a quadratic equation. Okay, so yeah, this is the quadratic equation. So this is the x1, this is the first root and this is the second root. So when you say that this is less than zero, so at this point at x1 and x2, at x1 and x2, your x value is equal to zero, or your, sorry, your y value is equal to, so this is your y axis and this is your x axis. So let me explain that. When y is equal, so x1 at, at x1 and x2, we call that the root, you should understand that at that point y is equal to zero, or your parabola is becoming zero at x1 and x2. When it is greater than x1, okay, so let me write this, when uh, it's greater than x1, when, let me write this in words, greater than greater than x1 or sorry not greater than x1 it should be greater than x2 greater than x2 so what I'm saying is when you have for this area for whichever values which is greater than x2 or less than x1 let me write this in a mathematical way I hope you should be able to understand when 
I'll write like this in a mathematical way. When your x, which is your x coordinate, is less than, when x is less than x1 or greater than x2, for this area, your y is greater than 0. Can you understand? For when your x values, or for each, for any x value which is less than x1, which is less than x1, and greater than x2, you will have this, this part of the graph. You're talking about this part of the graph. For this part of the graph, so this green part of the graph, this is the green part of the graph. For this green, you have to understand this very well, thoroughly. That's why I'm spending time here. For this part, when x is less than, your, when your value of x is less than x1, that's how I show this, x is less than x1, and x is greater than x2, you get the green part. And at the green part, your y value is greater than 0. It's above the x-axis. Same way, when, let me use a different color, suppose blue, when, when is your y, I want you to think now, when is your y value less than 0? Well, we can say the y value is less than 0 for this part. So let me shade that in a different color. Let me use blue here. So this part, for this part of the parabola, what should be your x values? That's what we are, the question is. For this value, for this part of the graph, your x should be greater than, x should be greater than x1. It should be greater than x1, but less than x2. Okay, now you may wonder what, why am I spending so much of time? So now, thinking graphically, we can do this algebraically, but I, I'm going to use a graphic calculator. So I want to find, for this quadratic equation, which are these two values, x1 and x2. So let me grab that first. Let me delete x. So I'm going to type in, in place of k, in place of k, I can put, I can put uh, x squared. So x squared like this, minus 16x, you can't put k in your graphic calculator, plus 4 equal, and then draw it. So this is a parabola. So we are interested in this point and this point, or any value of x which is between this two will satisfy the equation. So I'll go g solve. This is called a root, one root. So one value is your x1 in this case is 0 0.25. I'll write in 2 dp or 254 in three decimal point or decimal places. And the next value would be 15.746. So, so yeah. This x1, in this in this case, uh, for this x1, your x1, let me write x1, the parabola that we drew was 0 0.254. 0 0.0.254. 0 .254. Okay, and your x2 is 15.746. 15.746. So we can say, therefore, so when k is less than 15.746, I'm writing only in, or greater than 0 0.254, I cannot write 0 0.254 properly, 0 0.254, you have, you will have no real roots. So when whenever you have a value between these two values, your parabola will be not intersecting the x-axis. So let us check whether this answer makes sense because it's always good to check whether. So which value comes between these two values? Okay, heaps of values. So I can take a neat number, say five. Five comes between these two values. So let me get a graphic calculator, exit, I want to delete it. So in place of k, I'm going to substitute 5. 
so the equation was 3 3 x squared plus plus I'll put this in the bracket k is 5 so I go 5 minus 2 times x plus 5 and then graph it to take it up graph it so can you see it is up it's above the x-axis okay it will not intersect and you take any value between these two so let us take a value outside this range what happens suppose if you take 16 okay so let me change this to instead of uh, 15 I'll let me take 16 let me delete so this is delete and in place of 5 I'm going to change that to 16 and delete and see what happens it does intersect okay uh, if you want to see it better let me make the scale a bit it does intersect so if you go g solve there are two roots here okay doesn't seem to be so if you take any value which is outside the range will either have one root or two root but if you take any value in this range the parabola will be above the x-axis it will not intersect the x-axis and that is what it means to say it has no real roots